What's up guys, Jordan from Venice Customs. We are back on another episode, 2024. Crazy 2023 year it was, especially with YouTube and stuff and how far we've kind of taken the channel over the, over the last year and couple years. Massive thank you again, we say it all the time, but we do owe you guys and, and you know, our, all, all of our appreciation. 2024 is gonna be a big year. We got some really cool opportunities, some really amazing travel trips and especially some build series coming through for for the years. Without further ado, we are going to get stuck straight into this. We are going to create some like recessed boxing plates um, that will end up being the foundation for our motor mounts that we're going to make in order to get this bolted into this and removing the transmission jack and just letting it sit there, you know, with that cradle that we fabricated. So we need to get the cradle on the table, finish weld that up. We need to get our links or our bushing, sorry, mounted on. Um, and then we're gonna start to figure out how we're gonna create these recessed boxing plates. Yeah, just wanted to give a little shout out to, um, to the boys at Air Ride Suspension Supplies. Um, they, were able, they gave us a little goodie pack. We got some air fresheners, a few stickers, a couple keychains and stuff in there. They do have a really nice Hoppus uh, two pump set up that you know, we'll be probably looking at in the future when we get the uh, 55 volts back in. Maybe, who knows? Hydros? Could be pretty cool. But anyways, let's get into this video. All right, so as I mentioned, I am gonna um, try and get this thing fixed down to the fab table and square it up, and then we are gonna try and get our end links, or so call them motor mounts, um, fitted on here. And I actually don't want them to be dead center. I want them to just be offset slightly and that's just gonna help up inside kind of where we have a bit of, um, you know, the area where we wanna make the motor mounts. It's gonna help if they're just kind of set back a little bit. And then once everything's kind of clamped down, then I'll probably do one full pass on this side, let it cool down naturally, and then we'll flip it over, clamp it all down, do the other side, and then the, the basically the cradle is uh, essentially finished. Um, and then we can bolt this to the back of the transmission, get this back, up inside there and then we can start to work out exactly how we're going to fit this. All right, so as you can see from the previous video of using all my clamps, I actually used my little clamping set. This actually came from Princess Auto, surprisingly, back home in, in, um, in Canada. I used to work there, actually, for quite a few years. It was very fun. Um, but anyways, I was able to drill some holes in our fab table and get this clamped down and square. Um, the great thing about this is it comes with all different sizes um, and you know your different threads and all sorts just to make sure that it's kind of a universal fit for how you need to try and clamp everything down. And then I'm just gonna put my degree on here making sure everything is square, making sure these are square. Uh, and then I'm gonna give everything a wipe down. And then I think what we can do is start to tack some stuff and start to run a few passes on here. <laughs>
All right, so we just pulled it out of the jig. I've just put one side in for our bushings and I'll just um, show you how I'm gonna do that. It's pretty self-explanatory. I was able to, you know, obviously get some, uh, a good amount of heat into those welds, which was really nice. I've just put a little bit of assembly grease on, on these bushings. Um, it just makes them a little bit easier to install uh, in, into its home. So let's flip this over. <clears throat> and then once this is on, I'm gonna go and bolt this back onto the uh, bell housing and get it underneath the van again. It's kind of funny, like a very simple piece like this, obviously it takes a fair amount of time, but we want it to be as strong as possible. And like I said in the previous episode is, I'm not sure if this is gonna be enough to, to kind of hold the weight of the motor. So there still might be another bracket or something, um, and I'd rather over-engineer it than under, as I mentioned. So we're just gonna get this fitted back up, and um, yeah, we'll just get this fitted back up now, and then we can uh, have a little look and see. Oh, we can get it. It's, it's a tricky one. These motors are a little bit tough to be able to kind of fit perfectly. And, you know, I would like to probably have this up, um, say another like two or three inches, which would be perfect. But with those Subaru uh, transmissions, the shaft that comes out that is, uh, needs to be connected um, for your, obviously your gears, it kind of comes up on an angle. And it's almost like a seven and a half degree angle. So that angle, the higher we go up, the steeper um, or sharper our uni joints are going to be in order to try and make it work. Um, and you know, you don't want those to bond. I want this thing to obviously shift really, really nicely. What I did was I stuck a tire under, and this is this is obviously sort of at a you know using our high tech um, stand. This is definitely at a lower stance than you know kind of what it will be running at at ride height but i'm trying to you know anticipate a full load of people in the van you know an esky in the back full of beers maybe the dogs in there stuff on the roof rack you know we, we want to fully load this thing and say okay this is sort of where we were at what's our ground clearance towards um, the bottom of the motor and our cradle and everything so we have about 255 mil from the bottom of the tire to the bottom of the cradle, which is here. Now we can kind of go, okay, this is where we need to make the mounts. And I'm gonna start to make some cardboard templates in here. And once I kind of get those done and sort of explain what I'm doing, I think you'll get a better idea of how I think I'm gonna try and mount this. And it's probably gonna evolve a little bit as we go. So these frame rails are, they're pretty, they're paper thin. This whole car is just made of very thin material. I need to make something that either comes off these frame rails that has a tab that comes out on both sides that can pick this up. What I'm thinking is maybe I make a piece that comes, you know, even we can even fix it into there if we want to. And we sort of box this frame rail. We utilize these holes for where the um, shock would be picked up to and maybe we put another two here. That way we can use a metal sleeve that we can weld in to both sides. So that's gonna help the, you know, the boxing not wanna collapse on itself. And it also will help it, you know, just kind of um, sideways as well. Then we kind of have, you know, nice strong point here that's got those holes in that we can then sort of fabricate some tabs to come off of and then we can kind of box the tabs in to obviously, you know, um, make sure they're relatively strong as well. If there looks like, you know, there's a bit of flex in it or I'm not really happy with just utilizing this area to hold the motor, then I, what I'd like to do is maybe make something come off the boxing plate that that would come, you know, up to say the bottom of the floor or we could kick up one back to here or, you know, we could maybe bring something from, from over here and bring it up and down, 
you know, we can add some tube work to really try and support it if need be. So let's get the cardboard out and start getting on the, uh, the uh, cardboard assisted designs, the CAD drawing. So I've kind of made up my mind, I think what I'm going to try and do, and I'm, rather than actually welding to the frame itself, I'm going to make little boxes that kind of sit in there with some sleeves, some bolts that'll hold it in, and then a couple bolts top and bottom. So it's going to sort of, um, the, the C channel of the frame will sort of go right around it, and then everything will kind of bolt in, and that way I can actually pull it out, fully weld it, do whatever I want, stick it in there. I can fully um, paint it before um, put installing it. And then once it's all in there, that thing's you know not going anywhere as far as all the high tensile bolts that will be holding it in. And I also wanted to mention something. A lot of people have commented on me using um, cardboard as a bit of a trace pattern with my plasma cutter. Um, and it works a lot of the time. A lot of these templates I'll just throw in a drawer. I have a drawer full of them. Um, and you can get so many out of them before you actually start burning through, which is um, awesome to use. But there's a little tip that I want to show you, and it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's worth sharing, is that the tip on the end of this is obviously flat, and then it has a taper. So if I were to put, if I were to put this up against the edge like that now and start to cut with the plasma, it wouldn't actually cut right on our line. So if, you're, if your templates have to be super accurate as I need these ones to be and I need it to be right on that edge, then you need to you know, trim your template in. So what I did was I measured, so I'm just gonna draw you a little picture. If this is your, this is a flat edge, so this is your cardboard template laying flat and this is our tip. So it comes down like this, up 45, and then this is obviously the, the tip of where it's actually gonna be shooting. Um, this is our material. So you need to measure between here and here. And whatever this measurement is, this is the material you wanna remove off your cardboard. So if we take this off, then this would essentially be cutting directly on our line. So I know that it's three and a half mil that I need to take off around the whole circumference of anything that I wanna make sure that this template is accurate in the steel as you know what we have. I'm just gonna trace all these out now. Um, the three and a half mil, trim them, and then we're gonna uh, cut these out and then I'll hold them in and I'll show you what I'm trying to do here. Alright, so you saw we were able to use our cardboard templates with the plasma cutter. 
That's twice on both, so you can see it's starting to just slightly burn the edge, but it still has a really hard edge, so these are still usable if I needed to cut more. Um, and then obviously we cut them and then I just hit them with the, the linisher just to knock off all the little um, dross that comes on it. But this is sort of where I'm at. Um, I've made this little setup here and all it is is just a couple of pieces of flat bar, a little 25 by 25 square tubing. This keeps it square. It just has a little bit of play and I can kind of lift up or bend down. And as I go in little increments, you can see that it slowly starts to shape these. So what I can do now is I can stick this inside the frame rail. We can clamp both the top and bottom of these inside the channel of the, of the frame and I can walk over and show you. Um, and then I can tack it. Then what I'm gonna do is find some sleeve that I can run maybe like a, a half inch bolt and I'd like to do maybe three half inch bolt um, through here sleeve. So this would, um, you know, we'd drill a hole and we'd weld it on the outside on both sides. So that's kind of obviously keeping it very rigid. This is kind of what we're gonna try and build is basically a mini little box or frame rail. So if you want, I'll just take you over and I'll show you what I mean. Lots of people say I talk too much, but I also want to thoroughly explain, you know, what, what we're trying to achieve so you guys have a better understanding of what I'm trying to do. And a lot of the time, I'm kind of explaining what I'm thinking I'm going to do, and then whether or not it'll work out, you guys get to kind of see it in real time. But I got these little shims here. That's just to shim this back piece up. So that's going to go in there like that. And then this one will get clamped up into here. This one will get clamped onto the bottom like that. And then I can come in here, tack weld this, then we can pull this piece out and then I can take my face in like that. And then now, once we have it bolted in here, bolted here and in the bottom, there's no way that that can go anywhere and it's obviously really rigid. So that is what I'm, that's what I'm trying to, trying to muster up. And look, we're adding a fair amount of material back there as far as weight and stuff goes. This motor is probably half, if not, more than half the weight of the original um, motor that would have been in there. Obviously the gearbox is a little bit bigger, but completely all aluminum um, block and heads and everything obviously makes it considerably lighter than it was. So we're not adding too much weight, but we're also, you know, we wanna make sure, I've explained it several times, that it is over-engineered so that it is strong ass. So that's essentially what we're trying to make. Basically it looks like a really nice swoop for a hot rod frame.
All right, so we got it fully welded on the inside and on the outside. You saw I TIG welded one side and then I MIG welded the other just to kind of show two different options um, and then just blended it using that technique with the square wheel on the, um, on the air grinder. Works really well. Um, so as you can see, I have two holes drilled in it as well and those two holes pick up the original um, mounts for where the shock goes so I can utilize that again, which is great. Um, and I've kind of changed my mind a little bit. So I originally was gonna stick this in and we were gonna cap it and box it all in and put sleeves and everything in. And I honestly don't think it's necessary. I think the way that I'm gonna try and do this, it's gonna sort of box itself using the mounts. So if you can imagine it sits like this and it's gonna be kind of roughly right around there, I'll make a mount that will actually go inside here and come out and then come back in. So it'll be fully welded, which will kind of essentially box this. And then we can add a little top plate in between both to obviously make it so it's a little bit stronger. So I just want to show you how it kind of fits in. It's um, definitely a tight fit, kind of snaps into place. That's where it's going to sit. And then I can, um, I'll just throw, this is the kind of aftermarket shock mount that comes with the kit for these, um, these rear control arms. We'll just throw these on here. And you can see what I mean by that'll clamp it in. We'll probably put another one right around here. And then it's gonna have a couple along there as well. And then this will have the motor mount. So it's gonna be really, really strong. The bonus is we can remove this to do all of our welding on the mount as well. So we're not gonna be in here trying to get in all different weird angles. So I think I might end this video here. I feel like I was kind of talking a lot throughout it, but I just really wanna show you guys and explain sort of my thought process in, um, in how to do this. Cause obviously there's no instruction manual on how to put a radial motor into a split window combi. So kind of thinking on the fly, trying to think obviously a few steps ahead, um, you know, being able to utilize the that shock mount worked out perfect and uh, I think it should all come together really nicely. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Please like, subscribe, hit notifications and we'll see you next week when we get the other side done. We'll start making some motor mounts and this thing will be in here with no stand under it, bolted in under its own weight and then that's just a major box ticked on this whole entire project. From there, then we can move into, um, you know, maybe looking at designing and fabricating up a new fuel tank, um, some radiators, and then we need to figure out our linkage setup for this as well. Um, and then that'll all go in. So, so kind of going like kind of, you know, back to front. And then once we get to the front, we'll be doing shifter, clutch pedal, um, uh, brake pedal, all that bracketry, all that stuff to make sure it test fit, brake lines, etc. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and we will see you next week on Bennett's Customs. Thanks very much guys. Out down the road, far my half to see.